been here well, for a week. Of course he has. He's been, well, it's probably more than that. He's been practicing with his team for mm -hmm. God knows how long. So that's probably more important at the moment. But picks and bans are underway. And you can see Pain Gaming having a bit of fun on camera there. Thresh and Ezreal, they have been banned out. Vayne and Zyra being taken away by Dark Passage. No surprise. Mm -hmm. Zyra working especially well for Espion in that last match. Vayne, of course, generally just nobody wants to play against him. Yeah, Zyra's been particularly effective so mm. far. I feel like Twitch has been particularly effective, just in the international tournament in general. Uh, the Zac is either like first picked or banned in almost every game for these teams as well. Yeah. Still trying to figure out why that is. It's like, well, it's, it, it's almost the same. I guess you could think of the Korean scene, think of Casey Rolls to B, Insect plays it a lot. Yeah, so he really European caught on scene, in North America during Super well. Week as well. Yeah. Zac top lane was kind of everywhere. Once people are getting enough farm on him, he's really just able to create. And it's it, annoying. Oh, that, that too. He literally bounces around the team and... And then when you kill him, him he's not dead. kill him again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but really, oh, that's good. That is good. Twitch has banned out. Actually, three AD carries being banned out in this one. But Shen has managed to sneak his way through. So Venon looking like he's going to be Shen on the top lane. It could be Surti in the jungle as well. But Sona Javan also being picked up by Dark Passage. Yeah, it's actually been four AD carries banned across both teams. Uh, because Ezreal got banned by Pain as well. And it, it's interesting here because we're thinking about the things that BRTT has played, at least in the qualifier, he played Twitch, Vayne, Kog'Maw, and Vayne again. So they've obviously banned out, uh, sorry, you're, you're, you're right, 380 carries. I wasn't gonna say anything, Jan. I mean, I wouldn't wanna- You were just gonna, you wouldn't wanna call me on anything. <laughs> no chance. I think you should, no. actually, if I say something you like really? that. Really? Yeah, really? if I say something like really wrong, and then he's just going to pull this crystal like ball and just make predictions like, like for the whole day. Zyra is actually an AD carry. <laughs> Thresh is AD mid. No. <laughs> um, Thresh technically could be an AD carry. He has very and good AD There's a lot AD of people scale. have talked about him trying to run him in the top lane. So, you know, maybe I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, but that, that interests me. A Moo Moo in the jungle. Wow. Mm. This is something that Payne hasn't even been close to running in their other games, for one. Uh, such a difference in jungler choices for Sir T from game to game. Vi, who just lives in lanes and tries to gank, versus a Mumu, who you can play as a ganker, but you shouldn't. You should play a Mumu as a farmer who sit, hits level six and then becomes a monster. I really want to see how this one pans out for Pain because that's not necessarily your get on the AD carry, dive him extremely well team like they've been running. It's a whole new ball game for them. Well, Miss Fortune looks like she's going to get locked in. They're just like, well, you don't want that Curse of the Sad Mommy coming out. We want to get rid of that one. That limits the AD carries, but it doesn't, because look what's available. Caitlyn for BRTT. If he wants it, especially against Miss Fortune. That's pretty much the thing that people picked against Miss Fortune when Miss Fortune was all the rage. Mm. Outranger by a huge margin and able to oh. get that. But, you know, he had played Kog'Maw in that other qualifier game. He can still pick whatever he wants. Mainly that just means those AD carry bans were fear at his strength on those instead of being, um, like, trying to ban him out. And this this is a this is a NASA's top lane. We saw Soaz running that in the playoffs mm -hmm. just the other day in the European LCS. Yeah, they have Brazilians that continue with that uh, Mordecai's off. <laughs> but they're not going to lock it in. It is going to be Caitlyn selected, and they're probably going to switch across to Gragas. Gragas, who actually was run by Nuru in the game one. No, tell a lie. It was Mazarin. Mazarin. Yes. He's played it, I mean, once, but also twice, because there was the remake there. And Cammy played it a bunch of times. In the last game mm. for them to qualify, he went 15-1-4 and four on Gragas as well. So, oh, switch to Ari. Just, to, just to, we, we got the stat out. That's what it counts. That's what counts. It's like 51 of four. I can do better than that. I'm gonna pull Ari out. Yep. Nope. Um, we're not gonna, of course, see Mordecai as selected in here. It could be Cassidy, in, but I'm not too sure. Cassidy against the Ari. Uh, it can work. They basically just all fly around. It's Ari beats it. Ari beats it early. Then after that, they just kind of match roam with each other. I want to talk about the Nasus top lane specifically, because when Soaz played that, it was actually quite brilliant against the Malphite. He yeah. rushed the Spirit Visage, and there was no way Malphite could stop him from farming due to his natural health, or natural lifesteal, and the regen he got from the Spirit Visage. I think Shen has a little bit more harass, and it might not work as well 
but I want to see this matchup. I don't think it's as smart as against Malphite, but it could still work since Payne, aside from the Ari, doesn't have a, a hyper mobile team. Nasus might actually be able to live next to a Mumu and some other people on Payne and do some damage in fights if he gets farmed. Yeah, and considering that he's ganked in the last match with uh, Vi, I'm interested to see how he's going to work out with a Mumu because a Mumu is definitely a very different jungler. It is so much different. I mean, the counter jungle potential from Dark Passage early. If Jarvan can get going, Riosta has not had the best track record of counter jungling so far in this international wildcard tournament, but the potential is definitely there for him. Lion Gaming 1 0 up against Gaming Gear. That's, of course, on stream A right now, but right here on stream B, it is Pain. Pain potentially going to top the league. Well, they are top of the league right now. Can they go 3 0? That's the question. Of course, that could push Dark Passage to 1 and 3, or. Will it be a 2-2 for Dark Passage and pushing Pain Gaming to equal Immunity's record of 2 and 1? It's going to be tough. Head-to-heads, Pain Gaming would still be top of the league. Of course, there are the teams set up here. We are actually on the Riot Community booth, actually, the Riot Community stage. If you want to come and find us here at Gamescom, this will be the only day we are broadcasting from this booth, though. Of course, everything else will be back on the main stage, but there is so many games today. We didn't want to miss you, you guys to miss this. We didn't want to do them off stage so nobody watched yeah. it. So it's simply a case of, well, we're only having to broadcast one. We'll pick and choose. We wanted you guys to see everything, and in 720p, of course. So here we go. Pain Gaming, they are the blue team, and Dark Passage as the red team. We are live, live, live. It's Brazil versus Turkey. Yeah, and there are so many games at Gamescom across the five days that, of course, we have to stream double stream on the first day just because otherwise you can't fit it into the whole five days. Yeah, and it's, I would say it's the problem of being in convention centers, but actually running pretty much every hour possible. There's no, it's not really the convention center is slowing yeah. down. It's simply not enough hours sleep. in the day. Yeah, sleep deprivation may Rest actually be an issue. Naru slowly backing away from that one. Do you want to see whether forcing maybe a Surtee to try and take that bandage off early on? Dangerous, dangerous territory, aggressive invade. Very aggressive invade here from Payne. They're taking confidence in here, and since Dark Passage was off trying to ward the red buff with only Sona, anybody who could have potentially gotten caught by Payne would have died there. Luckily, Dark Passage does have knowledge of them being there because they were kind of darting their heads in and out of dangerous spots, and they never managed to get hit. And that does mean, of course, that the fact the wards have been placed by Pain Gaming, they've put them out in and around that red buff area. You did also see Dark Passage getting one of their wards of their own over on the Wraith. So simple vision for both teams to cover off the jungle roots. It looks like it's going to be a potential 2v1 set up by see, it's Pain Gaming forcing it. You can see they're sending BRTT and Espion on Caitlyn and Nami and towards that top lane and up against Fab Fabulous on Nasus, which does mean we're going to see the Thinion and Holy Toph in the bottom lane in the 2v1 against Venon. And Venon on the Shen, well, no problem there. It's, it's pretty much standard the 2v1 lane. I don't think Dark Passage wants 1v2s for Nasus. I feel like with that Nasus pick, they absolutely want him against Shen, and I'm surprised they're not trying to go into any lane swaps early on. Actually, as soon as Fab Fabulous saw uh, the lane in the top lane, he kind of ran immediately to his turret. How, however long Dark Passage stays in this lane, I think is an advantage for Pain. Yeah, maybe they're going to try and force it instead. Riosta is going for that red yeah, buff straight away. here. He does have Holy Thoth with him. And look at that. It's too late. Too, too slow. Because mm -hmm. that is where Sir T started. I don't think they were expecting Sir T to start there. Yeah, but Sir T made the smart play, knowing that he had his AD carry and support top lane. There was no way that if Dark Passage put their AD carry and support bot lane, they could protect his red. That's why he had to take it right away. Oh, Naru trying to go for an opening exchange with Kami, and you can see, actually, Riosta coming in, expecting him to dive in that way. Instead, he tries to throw out those orbs. Sati coming in, all oh, banished off, not gonna land. Naru also going very low in there. Ignite was burned by Kami, though. And actually, Sir T is trying to pull off a lot of early aggression here on Amumu. Because he has his Nami up top, and there's no support to help Riosta, they might actually be able to pull off a buff steal with the Mumu on Jarvin. They do manage to get the bandage toss and the Aqua Prison on towards him. He's going to have to slide away from this one, but the Ignite running, that's going to be the red buff gone. Yeah, so very aggressive play, regardless of champion, really catching Dark Passage off guard and punishing them for guessing wrong on Sir T's start. If Riosta didn't put so much time into trying to steal that red buff, this extra red steal wouldn't have even been possible for Sir T. So great start for Pain Gaming once again here. It has put them slightly in the edge. You see how the 
lanes are working out. Of course, the AD carries are pretty even. They're both in opposite lanes, but in terms of farm, they're keeping toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other, as you would expect us to the mm -hmm. first couple of waves. Meanwhile, though, we are seeing Fab Fabulous pushed on the tower. This is where he's going to be happy, but overall, I don't think he's happy at all. Thalia going very aggressive, oh. but that's Shadow Dash Torn catching on towards the Thalia. He's going to take two tower hits. That's some big, heavy hits right there. Yeah, and Holy Thoth is going to have to use the remainder of his mana pool even to get them close in here. It's just a matter of how much can Venon heal up now that he did take that damage under the turret we have some very aggressive action going down in that bottom 2v1 whereas fab fabulous i still don't think this is a good 2v1 for for dark passage to be in but they seem to be fairly confident with this sona mf that they can make something happen well, speaking of making things happen riostas going to come up towards the top he's going to get pick up his golems and maybe pay a visit towards his top lane because pain are putting the pressure on towards that top both at the moment, both top laners still keeping up with the same farm, though. Yeah, but with no red buff for Jarvan, that gank is going to be excessively hard. Also, he just hit level three, but BRTT is is level four. At the very least, he's coming up here to, to kind of leech experience and save Fab Fabulous from potential danger. But mainly, he's just coming up here because he's out of jungle and he doesn't want the turret to take too much damage. Simply taking some of that lane tax as yeah. well. We'll see how that works out for him. Fab Fabulous. Get it. Is he, is he ah, leveling up the spirit fire there? Was he? Yeah, he, he must be. Since he's trapped in, uh, he's one, one, one in all three oh, of the spells okay. right, right now. Right now. He actually the just put the second one. Holy Thoth's gonna get caught on. Sati does manage to get the damage down. Teleport coming in. Sati's gonna back away. He's got the double buffs. He's just gonna walk away from this one. Teleport was cancelled as well, and that was actually. Fab Fabulous teleporting down the bottom of Lithilion. Now he's out of position here. Shadow Dash doesn't manage to land. So T putting the pressure down. Aqua Prison on towards on the top lane, but it's going to be Lithilion. He's taken so, so low. He's trying to pick up the kill on towards Venom. I don't think he's going to be able to get away from this one. The red buff picking. He's going to get caught, and it's another kill. Venom now takes that one. It's two for zero for Pain Gaming. Sir T is a madman. He's level four on a Mumu, but he has done more early game on Amumu than Jarvan has, and that is a terrible sign for Dark Passage, because Amumu, he doesn't even start being good until level six at this point, but he is really making plays early on in the game just by positioning and being in the right spot. And I tell you what, Espion and BRTT are a great combo. They're putting so much pressure back on Fab Fabulous. He's going to have to back away. Remember, he used his teleport. He was going to go down to the bottom. He had to cancel it. So he can't even teleport back to lane. He's going to lose so much experience here. I actually think the teleport was interrupted by a Nami bubble when he was trying to go down. So once again, it was just the pressure being put on them by Espion and BRTT that took him back. This is one of the reasons Payne's 2-0 right now. And Dark Passage has been struggling. And so far in early, early on in this game, their previous results are showing in their play. So that is going to be the turret going down. Not quite this round. On BRT, I they thought he could finish it, but they thought, no, best not tank this one out because there is going to be a rather large dog coming this way in the form of Fab Fabulous. BRTT will take it down in the next hit. Sure, but it does take it down. So first okay. turret of the game, Pain Gaming. Yeah, and now Fab Fabulous needs to enter farm mode. His turret is gone. The question is, is Dark Passage going to try and push back, which at that case, why are you necessarily doing the top lane Nasus if you can't stall and farm for him? What the danger is going to be, though, is pain. Where does BRTT and Espeon go now? And can they get a second and third turret before Dark Passage can answer back? That's when the game could really get out of hand. And they picked themselves up a BF sword, BRTT, yep. and it looks like it's the top lane. He went for straight for that Bloodthirster before, but look at this. DP realizing and trying to go mm. for that dragon. And it's very strange because Payne sent their AD carrying support up there yet again. Surti is not level six, and this seems like a dragon they can very well get unless they try an incredibly aggro 3v4 contest. Yeah, He's gonna he, try to seal it. So T's trying to go in there. He does get close enough, but not close enough to get the smite down. They're gonna try and lock up and try and get a kill out of this one. Will it be Riosta? They're gonna try and keep him away. He's gonna have to slide through on towards the blue buff. Spirit Rush being pulled out, and it's gonna be Kami that follows it through, picks up that kill, and now Naru's in trouble. He's gonna get focused on. Has to rift walk away from this one. They can see another bandage toss onto Holy Thoth. Holy Thoth's gonna walk away from this one. So pain gaming, they get themselves a kill, but it's a dragon with Dark Passage. Yeah, that was very strange by Dark Passage because they had more people and they were just pretty much running away despite Kastin being just strong. Sure, Ori is scary at level 7, but putting no damage back in a 4v3 when the dragon is dead. So it's not like the dragon's going to be damaging them while they fight. I feel like Dark Passage could have fought that, but they were just scared of Ori and they ended up giving up ground. 
Oh, look at Sir T. He wants he's to come so in. aggressive. He's got that smite available, and he's thinking, you know what? I could use this one. I'm going to go for it. And then the Rue comes in. He tries to go aggressive on him, but look at Sir T. He's <laughs> using the bandage toss. He's going aggressive on a Cassidy. Level 5 Amumu. No blue buff. No ultimate. Completely pushing Naru off of that blue buff, and then almost taking him out of lane. This is just I like, like this one guy. of those simple confidence things. It's like, yeah. I am going to go aggressive on you, and you are going to back down from me. So T, using the smite there, confirming he does pick up that blue buff. Kami, of course, will be taking the blue buff of his own side. So Pain Gaming taking every advantage, every little bit of resources away from Dark Passage that they can. Yeah, I feel like Sir T is almost just bluffing in a lot of these situations. Being like, yeah, you're going to be scared of me. I'm going to run up into you, and you're going to back away. And there's no reason for him not to, because Dark Passage is not calling him on anything. He's only 20 minion kills so far in Amumu. He spent the whole game just running at people without his Amumu ultimate. It's ridiculous that it's working so well. It's like one of those one of those aggressive fight modes when you run at him screaming, waving your hands in the air. It's like, back away! Yeah, <laughs> and they will. <laughs> it seems to work. BRTT, well, Riosta just used the smite, by the way, on that golem in the top lane, which means on this red buff, he doesn't have it available, nor does Sir T, so it's actually simply a case of fighting with damage, and it's BRTT that uses it with the Piltover Peacemaker. So now, one and a half thousand gold lead for Pain Gaming. One thing Sir T has to be a little bit careful of, even though he's, he's honestly playing Amumu exactly like he played Vi last game is falling too far behind in farm on Amumu so that he is just a walking ultimate and he explodes anytime he comes close to a fight. He doesn't necessarily know where that's a thing. That's the sad mummy, I believe, is a he... much longer torrent timer than uh, Vi's assault and battery. Yeah, it's a 120 second cooldown with the blue buff on him right now, so it's much longer without that cooldown reduction. So then I'm taking that red buff. We haven't really had a chance to look at him. He's almost got that Sunfire K built up here. Here comes Sir T. Red buff being given back to Sir T, so they're keeping him. That obviously works out with his aggressive play. Mm -hmm. I actually really love with Amumu just running at people with red buff, but look out, ganks from all angles. Kami trying to go aggressive and actually turning this one around. He does have the Stan United coming. That's forced everybody to back away from Dark Passage. Spirit Rush still up there, does manage to come across, gets the charm on towards Fat Fabius, followed up by Curse of the Sad Mommy. He's going to have the uh, uh, flash on towards him with that red buff, of course. Kami picks it up with the balls. Now four kills to zero. 1.7 thousand good advantage, and the dives just continue. They're so aggressive. They try and use that cataclysm onto Kami, but he flashes out of his shadow dash. Comes across. Sir T comes in there as well. It's another kill for Venon. Yeah, Dark Passage is trying to get something back by split pushing the top lane here, but if they're losing the mid lane in the process, it's just not worth the trade. So far, obviously five kills to zero. Dark Passage being completely pushed around by Pain, and I don't know if they have an answer. I'm not sure they do either, because looking at the damage, you know, Lathelion went for the mo mobility, went for the Berserker Greaves and the Vampire Acceptor, while, mm -hmm. well, PRTT, he's Can't done trade. straight the damage. He wants to get all those towers down. They are going to come down towards the bottom lane. You see that Lathelion and uh, Fab Fabulous are coming down here, but I think they may get the turret first now. Yeah, Dark Passage was trying to come down and almost bait Pain to going in, and there were no wards in the area, but you could tell they kind of sensed it, that there was a dangerous thing here. They needed to wait for Kami to get into the mid lane, have a presence there so that Kassadin wasn't free to roam. And now I think they continue to push because as you mentioned, that BF sword versus just Berserker's Greaves isn't even close as soon as they start fighting each other. Kami seems to start finding his stride here. He's starting to look a little bit confident. He's already starting to go aggressive on towards Naru there, throwing out those orbs, throwing out those charms. He does not have Spirit Rush. He has to tell a lie. He does. Spirit Rush is available, and he's gonna still can stick around. He wants to go aggressive. The Ignite should be enough. He takes wow. down Naru, and now it's going to be Sir T. He comes in, gets the charm on Fab Fabulous. This isn't over yet. He could turn this one to another kill. Fab Fabulous is going to get the Bandage Doss on him. And they're going to try and go aggressive on Kami. Kami has got Flash. Doesn't manage to use it, but Fab Fabulous is going to go down. So T picks that one up. He's not done yet. He might go to Riosta. Get nice the shot. bandage shots. Can he turn it out? One more. Will it be enough damage? He's trying to lock him up. He's taking a lot of tower damage here. He's going to use Curse the Sad Mommy to secure another kill. Sir T is just putting on an Amumu clinic here. The Sad Mommy. All his friends were gone, but he still managed to finish off. He's 3 0 and 4 now. Boots and mobility rushed because why not? He's living in the enemy jungle, only fighting people. Awesome Amumu play by Sir T. Pure aggression seemingly to work for Pain Gaming here, and Sir T, probably the most aggressive jungler we've seen in some time, that's oh, for sure. Yeah.
a lot of the uh, European and NA LCS players have definitely been tailored, but then again, they know how to counter this aggression, and it seems that Dark Passage don't have an answer right now. Rios has been trying. He's desperately been setting up those ganks, trying to get Nauru going, but every time he does, Kami pulls off a kill. Yeah, and we saw in one of the earlier games, Riosta hasn't had the most success counter jungling, even when his pick is tailored to do so. It seems like Sir T is just on another level right now. He's beating him to every spot, judging his fights better, and he's on a moo moo against a Jarvan. He shouldn't have the same tools, but he's out executing by a large march. Kami throwing out that charm, just sort of landing on the route, saying, yeah, I can kill you when I want to. Oh, good night to Caliber. Net there, Cataclysm comes out, flashes straight out of it. Safe play from BRTT. BRTT using both of escapes to deal with both of Riosta's move blocks at that point. He just, he escapes the Jarvan. Riosta hasn't been able to pull anything off, and Kami, ooh, should have landed that combo. Showed himself a little early. Yeah, showed himself yeah. a little too early there in the route. Smelling it coming, gets out of there. Instead, it is going to be Dragon. This will be the first one for Pain Gaming. Dark Passage managed to secure it the first time around. Holy thoth has got to be close. Careful, he doesn't get too close. Yeah, there is a teleport up for Fab Fabulous, but knowing that they were down eight kills to one, they just didn't want to contest that. They recognized that they would lose that fight very badly, and they're waiting to find a couple f almost free kills because they know what a team oh! fight. <laughs> they wouldn't get it. Bandage toss landing on Riosta just as he did the Dragon Strike slide through. Yeah, so unlike uh, like a, Ma a Maokai Twisted Advance, the Bandage Toss teleports him to the point with which he landed it, not to the character himself. That's why we didn't see Super Amumu flying through the turret to chase Jarvan. Oh, there's a skin exam, the skin idea right there. Super Amumu, it could come out. We've got Pool Party, maybe. But look at the pressure. Pain Gaming trying to put some damage on towards the first inner turret of the game in this bottom lane. The Charm landing actually on towards Riosta again, putting the damage back on towards him. Naru trying to use that Force Pulse, can't even clear the wave. And every time BRTT just steps in, puts another shot on the turret. And Fab Fabulous isn't here right now. Now, he's trying to catch up on farm on Nasus, but I don't necessarily think he has the time to do so. Look at all the objectives that Dark Passage has kind of lost. A, because they're down in gold, but B, because they just don't have enough people in the area. Uh, blue buff got entirely warded down. Dragon is gone. They're down three of their outer turrets, and they need to find some way to get something back in this game. And we talked about Shen and how vital he can be. 2-0-2 Venom can just ideally split push off and keep the pressure on towards Dark Passage, which is what Fab Fabulous is trying to do. He's pushing the top, while the bottom lane is actually driving through Lathilion and Holy Thoth, trying to get on towards that turret. But they just, every time they go there, they get stopped, interrupted instantly. They may buy themselves time to finally take that bottom turret down. Yeah, well, actually, BRTT stopped for a red buff, and it seems like they're willing to part ways with that turret. They've spent long enough dealing with its stuff. They don't need it anymore. They can deal with the, They can deal with themselves. They don't need the protection. They may be in trouble though. How are they going to escape this one? Because Sir T is cutting them off. He's I don't, think they're, the gonna, I don't think they're getting out of this one. You're going to see there's the wave coming through. Holy Thoth's the one that side Ooh. steps in. That's going to give him a problem. Puts the crescendo down, but Sir T's just going to walk straight up. Pops those tiny tears, catches the... Because the sad mommy, is he going to come in there? There it is. We'd already seen the... Uh, attack coming out. Oh, the sniper oh. getting through. Holy Thoth gets taken down. Riosta did manage to jump on towards Espion, but BRTT is doing damage from the side. Sir T is not giving up yet. Tries to get it towards Riesta. Flash is in there. That's going to be Sir T going down, though, and that's actually giving a kill to Naru. But look at this. Coming across the side, he's going to have Spirit Rush. Comes in around the side, gets on towards Naru, turns it back around. BRT picks himself up another kill. And that is overall a three for two for Pain. Decent counterattack by Dark Passage right there, but really, Kami coming in right at the right moment. If the Nami ultimate didn't split for that field goal there, I feel like it would have been a more successful fight. The shutdown on Sir T definitely hurts, but just the turret push they get afterwards makes it all worth it. And Lathelion, what is he doing? He can't defend this one. Get away no. from there. Why is he stepping so close Ooh. when he's trying to try and turn the damage around, but that charm comes flashing through. BRTT taking a good power cord there. Oh, get damage, there, trying to get that double up on him. It may have actually been come close. Double buff on BRTT. He's going to back off. He's going to mountain of gold again. Yeah, I'm saying, B I'm thinking BRTT is getting a little bit confident here. He's six and a half thousand gold, as we just saw, which is tops in the game. He had a race in the last one against Kami, just seeing who could get the most gold versus farm. At this point, he's just winning them both. 153 minion kills, 18 minutes in. Not the fastest farming game we've seen. Definitely very action-packed and so many turrets going down that the lanes haven't necessarily been in full farm mode. 
Still a great performance by BRTT on Caitlin. Second game in the row, he's done so well with the same champ. It's a long game for these players. A long day, I should say. Not a long game. Maybe a long game. Who knows? We're only at the 18 minute mark. Let's not go too long, far. Long day. Haven't been too many long games for Payne. Their first game against Gaming Gear definitely stretched. But these last two have seemed like very dominating performances so far. Obviously, they're 4,000 gold up. Uh, Dark Passage is going to try to turn it. Having the Kassadin and even having the Nasus, who, by the way, has sneakily been able to farm up mm. a little bit. Let's check what his Q is at, actually, because he maxed it first. It's at plus uh, 108 as far as his farming goes, so not an excessive amount high. Or no, 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 sorry. Plus 228. That's definitely more impressive. That is pretty impressive. So he's going to be hitting like a truck when he comes into these fights. When has not been in there for a while. Let's see how he does against Venom now. Because he is coming up, puts a ward in that tri bush, I believe. In fact, no, he goes for the river. Doesn't want to go up against him, though. They're both level 11. Doesn't want any of that. Wants, just wants to continue his farm. So this is going to be classic farming Nasus. Will eventually come into the game late on and suddenly lay down a lot of damage. Yeah, 33% cooldown reduction on him right now. It's a 2.7 second cooldown on his Q. So the longer he's able to stay up here, the better it is for Dark Passage in a sense. And Pain, it's not like aggression is a problem there. So I think they're going to be able to go in. They definitely want to. We'll see if they can do it. And the problem is, can they just negate him? Can they just keep him away from it? The fact that Curse of Sad Mommy's in there, he could get the charm on towards him. They could just control him in an Aqua Prison. So every time, because yeah. he's got to get into BRTT. That's who he's aiming for. But that Aqua Prison has been pretty accurate from Espeon. Now the blue buff is going to get taken away. Kami's in there, Sir, Sir TT. Is he going to go for oh. the ward? No, I think that was a Force Pulse steal by Nauru. Yes, it was. Nicely done by Nauru. That was very timely. Sir T got a little greedy. Mm -hmm. Instead of using a spite, he was trying to hand it off uh -oh. to Ari, but now they want it back. Maybe they want it back. There's going to be the Spirit of Curse of the Sad Mommy not landing. And the cres Crescendo coming out at the right time. Is it going to be enough? No, BRT gets down on towards Holy Thoth. Now it's going to be Lithilion that gets locked up by the Shadow Dash. And he's going to get taken down. The barrier comes out. Teleport coming in. Finally, we're going to see Fab Fabulous. No, he cancels the teleport once again and continues pushing up the top lane. I mean, really, he never wants to leave his lane on Nasus. The teleport itself was enough to force the disengage and now he's trying to split push down i actually think that was a pretty clever play by him not going in with that teleport because the animation itself is what scared pain back from that fight and it allowed him to push extra turret the question is though will pain pick up this dragon yeah, probably they have to try and prevent something here they are going to present uh prevent Fab fabulous's push that venon has forced him back with his presence so pain gaming despite being bullied away by a fake teleport it got the dragon. They got them the dragon, and it does keep that gold ticking in their favor. Now at 5,000 gold. And I'm looking at the builds coming out by Payne right now. They're having a lot of very important items completed. Kami specifically with that Deathfire Grasp on Ari has been all the rage lately. It's just because, you know, when, when DFG was first kind of remade in Season 3, a lot of the casters that traditionally would bring it didn't bring it anymore because they're kind of... They couldn't think to burst down since instead of just giving a percent damage, it now amp the rest of your magic damage spells. But since Ari has so many small packets of damage, it works perfectly for her because it's the debuff that happens for the next four seconds and he can just burst down whatever target he decides to go for. As well as the Bloodthirster and Last Whisper build that's come out for BRTT, he had such great success with that last game, not necessarily trying to crush with auto attacks at this point, but trying to pick up those extra few kills with his Piltover Peacemaker and his Ace in the Hole. So sticking with the last build, I guess Static Shiv may well come out next. I think, he, I think he'll do the same thing. Mm. It seems to work. Why not? When eight worked, something like that in the last match. So it seemed to be working out well. He's at three and zero on this time around. Espion with that Oracle. So T, he's been laying down some serious aggression. Did just use his smite. I was just wondering, did he just use? It was his smite actually used on the uh, Siege Minion. But securing that extra gold doesn't really have any objectives to go for so no reason to sit on that smite gives you that extra gold <laughs> throwing out those bandage tosses at every single bush he gets a chance to and right now pain is trying to get some oracles control to end this game this would be very telling as we watch the international wildcard teams to see kind of uh what professional level they've been on because it seems like a pattern that happens at least in the na and eu lcs the teams that are pretty good but still new, don't know how to close games when they have a lead. And considering how aggressive Pain is, they shouldn't have issues closing games, but if they don't know how to go around with the Oracles, get the vision denied properly, find the forceful fights, they're gonna struggle later on. 
Let's see if they can end this one because they have a lead that could give them a chance to close it. So T is clearing warts. He's chasing on. Hasn't gone such crazy aggression that we saw in the opening exchanges, but Payne are opening up a push in towards this mid lane. But it's kind of mistimed because I think they want Venom to be continued pushing in the top, top. They have got themselves a bit of time here. Venom with that Stan United could join at any time. Look, Holy Thoth looking to flash Crescendo though, just off the side. Yeah, and they've actually pulled Fab Fabulous down from his farm fest. He's at plus 336 on his siphoning strike, 23 minutes in. But this is actually the point in the game where most Nasuses get stuck. They want to farm up their Q more, but if they were to stay off in a lane by themselves, the other team is now strong enough to just kind of dive your turrets, which is why he's came down. He needs to find a way to actually get back to that, because I don't think 336 is enough to justify or bring back their 5,000 gold deficit. We'll see how that works out at the moment. 24 minutes gone, they are all backing off. You do see BRT get himself some free time with the minions down the bottom lane, so he's going to be clearing out that big wave. Looking at the gold, you can see he's got himself almost that 1,500, 1,600 gold advantage over his opposing laner, Lathilion. Meanwhile, in terms of mid laners, it's about 1,000 gold difference as well between those two and of course the junglers that's where the goal difference is and no surprise there so t at 417 has a giant lead 1500 plus over riosta yeah and he also just completed that adis of the legion so that's going to come in very big if naru tries to do any kind of foolish things on cash and in team fights can't say enough about sir t's play this game effectively playing amumu just like he did vi but then getting away with it we saw Venom coming in, he's going to get the Shadow Dash across Holy Thoth, see whether he follows it through. Not really got anyone there to damage to follow up though, so instead, it just seems that Pain are going to force them out of the jungle. Yeah, I mean, Pain is again taking control of the jungle, and this is their effort to try and end the game. Look at how many wards they put around Dark Passage's jungle, really trying to find a kill somewhere in the jungle. At this point though, they're just going in for the turret, catch a charm on a Fab Fabulous, but force the flash. And keeping that pressure on the jungle as well, on the turret, sorry, BRTT continuing to hammer down on that one, forces him away, Fab Fabulous maybe trying to bait it out, and you can see Nauru just off at the side, trying to see if he can get any picks of pain as they back away, but they're not backing away, they hope no intention of backing away, they're just going to follow the next wave in. And Dark Passage have already backed away from this one. Naru's in the mid. Yeah, Naru roamed all the way down on Cassid, and there is no Fab Fabulous. It feels like they've already conceded this turret, and they're just backing up, hoping to get some type of aggression back elsewhere. I know that's a dangerous turret to defend, but I don't think uh, Dark Passage had to give it up so freely. No, that's effectively trading a top inner turret for a middle outer turret, which, honestly, once given a bit of clearance, you could just run through and pick that one up any time. <laughs> Uh, they're not going to catch Cassidy, so Nauru is safe. He's just going to walk away from that one. Yeah, or is he? Is... He's actually going aggressive on BRT, trying to put damage back down, and BRT just turns around, shoots him. He's at that dangerous, dangerous auto attack in time where I don't think Nauru wants to go too close to him. Yeah, and this is exactly that next play that Dark Passage is trying to force as soon as they send Nasus down to the bottom lane because he's actually at a point now where Nasus can threaten turrets very quickly, which means Pain has to go right away. Either a teleport comes in now or they're just giving up turrets. They're giving up turrets. Bandage toss came out from CR oh, oh, wow, holy oh. fuck. Just living off the side. Oh. He really wanted to land that crescendo, make one of those big plays for Dark Passage, but instead he just got mullered. And they were not in sync there, and now they are in so much danger because they only have three people here and no crescendo. Oh, and there's going to be a curse of the sad normally onto Riosta. We do see the bullet time coming out, but look at that. The wave comes in. He's not going to surf that one. Kami is going to have the ignite on him, but he's going to survive it. But BRT is going to get taken down. No, tries to 90 caliber net away, but Naru follows it up. He could get a second. Does manage to pick up another one, and this is actually good. A good turnaround for Dark Passage. Can they get him towards the T? He's going to have to pass through one of the turrets. They should be able to chase him down. Naru's going to have another rip walk back up in a moment it's going to be caught down they're feeding it to the room they smart. need a triple kill smart smart play for dark passage but is it going to buy them enough time wow i think that's going to buy him a lot of time i don't know if it's enough but considering holy thoth was dead before that fight that turned out about as well as it possibly could have for dark passage getting the three kills on a cassidy is enough to threaten BRTT in the later fights, and most importantly, it gives Fab Fabulous extra time and a little bit of lane freedom to just get farmed up. You can see what a monster he was already just walking around in those fights. That's before this little extra alone time he's had with the double golems and the fight itself, which gave him a bunch of gold. This is potentially the problem. They focus on BRTT, and the thing is, 
with that wither, it can really take him out of the fight. And obviously, use it either on Cami or BRTT. BRTT almost certainly would be the focus target. If they can both double team, get on him, it's going to be a problem. Remember, remember, Holy Thoth was taken out of that fight before it even began. And he's still got a crescendo if they want to get mm. that next fight coming in. I think obviously that fight turned because of the scattered nature of pain around the, the inhibitor turret. But it does just go to show you the potential uh, chasing or sustained fight power that Dark Passage has if they manage to stall this game out later, which they actually have a pretty decent opportunity to do now that they've maybe dissuaded Pain from going directly for another gank based off the results of their last dive. Well, it is 15-6 in gold and uh, kills even, which in turn turns the gold into just shy of 6,000 gold lead. 6-4 turrets for Pain Gaming. They have taken the top and middle and bottom in a turret, so they managed to push everything out of the base of Dark Passage. Dark Passage simply pushed back towards their inhibitors, and now Pain, they're going to try and bait them out, they're trying to force them out, try and get something going around the Baron. Plus 414 on the siphoning strike for Fab Fabulous's Nasus right now, by the way, and still, still counting. It's getting maybe a little scary for Pain here because this is, you know, they've been, they're 2 0. They had that amazing start against Gaming Gear, but then they struggled to close that one. They did not struggle to close against Team Immunity. I feel like they're going to struggle in this one a little bit as well. Just because that dive didn't work. And because giving a triple fill to cast to cast it is legitimately scary for them. I also feel that Nuru is going to start becoming an issue as well, because he's just continuing to farm, continuing exactly. to start building damage. And once that death cap goes in, which it looks like he's going back to buy, no, he's going for sorcerer's boots. He didn't even have a sorcerer's. Yeah, he might actually go for a Zonya's there, uh, because he he's most likely going for BRTT, and he's going to go in burst him. And since BRTT has so much damage, he's mm. going to need that Zonya's to stop and then he could go in for a finish later. They hope his cooldowns while he's finishing off, come back out of it. Kami, uh, he's continuing that farm, and he is a dangerous, dangerous target. I kind of feel like, I feel sorry for Lithilion because he's not really going to get any protection in any of these fights. No, he's kind of on his own, and you can see he's going almost for a caster build anyway because he wants to keep his distance. He's pretty much just going to have bullet time. He's going to look to go for a Black Cleaver as well for that because there's no way. You're right, there's no way he's going to get protection. So, let's see whether Pain Gaming, despite their amazing start, despite Surti's crazy aggression before level 6 on a Moomoo, let's see whether it's going to work out or backfire. Have they left it too little, too late? They are going to try and get themselves. And every time they... Oh, God, holy thought. Completely caught out of position. That's oh. a four-man crescendo, but that charm's going to turn it around. He manages to flash out of it. Are they going to be able to turn this one around? The root taken very low. Ace in the hole comes through. Oh, Lands no. on towards Holy Thoth. This has gone disastrously long for Dark Passage. Fab Fabulous does manage to flash away, but simply done. That's only buying Dark Passage time because the rest of Pain Gaming are collapsing on. Lithilion is going to have that bandage toss back available. He's going to catch on towards him. Shadow Dash stacks in. Aqua nice Prison chain. stacks in. Absolutely no chance for Lithilion. That's going to be an inhibitor to it, and that's going to be an inhibitor down. Pain Gaming simply caught Dark Passage out. Wrong time there for Holy Thoth. Again, getting caught way ahead of his team. It's like he's looking for crescendos, but the team is not looking for him to make the play, and he just gets caught in the wrong position. Everyone else on Dark Passage tried to fly in after, but it was the one after the other. Never any sinking or synergy, and they get wrecked in that fight. And the Rue and uh, Riosta looking to maybe try and get some exit kills there, but the rest of Pain Gaming were onto their game. Of course, that's kind of ideal for uh, Cassidy. He wants to try and just pick up anything. Fab Fabulous, well, he had to flash out of A. Didn't go down, and you can see he's just going to continue building that Q. He wants to tank up everything now. This is all about stacking that Q. Yeah, he's... Let's do the, the, the Q count right now. Cyprus 447. Strike. And that's going to be some more. 450. 453. <laughs> Up and up and up, right? That's He's getting stronger and stronger in a sense, but I don't think it's necessarily enough at this point because we saw how disastrous that last fight was for Dark Passage. Unless they go in together, they can't sink their stuff, and they're having huge issues making that happen because you look at the way Pain is initiating as well. Cami and Sir T are just going for it. I should point first. out, actually, that Curse of the Sad Mommy wasn't even used in that last fight either. Sir T had kind no of an important reason to spell. use it. No. Because there was never a group for them to catch. He can get enough going with just his banish tosses. 
I really like the Spirit Visage on him as well because a Moomoo with cooldown reduction means that Banish Toss is on a five second cooldown right now, 5.6. He's gonna be extremely aggressive in all of these fights. Well, it's good to see that Pain Gaming are starting to be stopped in their tracks by Dark Passage here. And welcome to uh, Stream A as well. If you have just joined us, well, you can see that Pain Gaming, they have a dominant position, but it's not over yet. And look at Fab Fabulous. Now we're starting to see how Nasus does against a split push in Shen. He'll beat him. Q is going to start doing work, and Venom's going to have to get away from this one. He's got no escape, though. Naru, why are you not coming down the bottom? Why are you not joining this party? He should be able to chase it, but instead they're pushing the top lane. Yeah, it's because the rest of Pain knows that as Venon is struggling against Nasus, they can go for a push. They can force Nasus off here, and then Venon can escape with a stand united to make something happen. This is a great call by Payne. Lethilion having to sidestep against Sir T. Sir T doing some serious, serious work in this game on that uh, Mumu. Those bandage tosses have been causing problems. They took half the hit points down, and look at this. Actually, Venon's just got away. They're letting Fab Fabulous just continue pushing. He's just gone up to get some health, and he's going to push up with the rest of his team. Remember that middle lane is super minions pushing through. Yeah, and at this point, it is dive time for Pain. The dive went wrong for them last time, but that turret does not have much health left, and they're just gonna go. It's a great crescendo because the Sad Mommy quickly counters it. They get a Shadow Dash on Lathilion. Lathilion gonna get locked up. He's got no protection here. He's trying desperately to run away from that one. He gets locked down. Riosta goes down. Pain Gaming are just making their way through Dark Passage, and they are surely, oh. surely gonna close out and maybe pick up a 3-0 lead in this group. Can they close it out? And the route desperately trying to get in there with a forced pulse but hasn't got the damage to stop pain gaming and that fight was just greatly timed by pain fab fabulous you can't be that far from home 35 minutes in when shen can just tower dive your team which is already behind great execution and i don't know if they can actually end this one because man fab fabulous is putting up pretty fabulous fight he's putting up as much of defense as he can here and brtt forced away from that one they have taken down the second inhibitor turret of the game though Dark Passage. Oh, the charm's oh. gonna land. Fab Fabulous in all sorts of trouble. I'm not sure he's got enough to defend off these two. They are damage dealers, and BRTT gets the 90 caliber net and a basic attack to finish it off. That will be Fab Fabulous down for a minute. Seven and one now for Caitlyn. This is another one of those games for BRTT where he's just picking up the right kills for Caitlyn. He's going for that full, pretty much full damage build with no attack speed. As soon as he gets a Zeal or a Static Shiv or a Phantom Dancer, his damage is going to multiply like crazy. Now that he has that Static Shiv, it's even more trouble for Dark Passage. And looking at, like you say, that Static Shiv being picked up, it's identical build from the last game. And it seems yep. to work so well for him. Kami as well, doing a fantastic job. So T, oh. though, we can't underestimate how vitally he was at the start of this game. Oh, yeah. 6 2 12 so far on Amumu. Amumu, a jungler we've not seen for a real long time, really used by anyone, in fact. I'm trying to think of the last no. time an Amumu was used in the LCS. In Same, Same Fish has played it uh, in NA during Super Week, but that was the first we'd seen out of it in forever. So maybe, maybe it's the return of the mummy. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is, we'll see. There's something okay. there. There's something there, there is something there. So let's have a look. The bottom lane, that's going to be where Paint Gaming look to try and push on through they've taken the top and the middle inhibitor oh we do see actually naru going aggressive on towards venom but not really doing a great deal of damage charm's being thrown out by kami he's trying to land it on towards fab fabulous almost certainly got to be the focus now because we've seen how much damage he can lay out lay out he's hitting for i think it's close to 900 now actually with that q so if he gets yeah. on towards brtt it will be trouble which is why holy boss desperately trying to get them flash crescendos in yeah that q of nasus is at plus 537 but at this time holy thoth is too he's leaning too much with his crescendos he has to surprise people with them you can t they can tell when he's looking for it they've already picked him off twice while he was trying to find a good crescendo, and you just gotta wait for it, especially since they know Pain is in a situation where they're going to go all in for that turret at some point. And we have a one patience is that, needed. That bullet time has not landed once again because the sad mommy so TT goes very deep there. Riosta manages to get a kill straight away. He goes down. There's gonna be the bullet time. Is it enough? Not gonna turn it around. The root does manage to get a kill on towards Kami though. They're gonna keep chasing him down. There's gonna be the damage. So T's gonna get dropped down. Ace in the hole's gonna come through. Not gonna do a great deal. It's the root that gets caught out there. That's got a great acroprism. The root's gonna have to use the Zonia's hourglass. Is he gonna be able to get away from this one? Rift walks away on towards Venom. Holy Thoth now gets focused. Shadow Dash comes in. 
in. BRT joins the fight. He is just going to rip Dark Passage apart. He's going to get straight through. There's going to be the pill over Peacemaker. They're actually going for the inhibitor turret. I don't know why, because they have both Nexuses available. Well, they won that fight by a lot, and BRTT really bided his time in that one. He was way back making sure he was alive because they knew they had control of it near the end of it. They're going to do the clean sweep of the inhibitors here, D-Man, because they are in control. That's going to be one inhibitor down. There's the second. The top one already dropped, so all three now down. So double super minions will be spawning, and Pain Gaming taking the time on this one. They're going to back well. away. And why not? Why not? No they rush. have full control. They're top of the league now, it seems. 25 kills to eight. They just had a, a very resounding team fight win. It looked a little close and scary in the middle, but that's because the seven and one Caitlyn was off looking at a bush for some reason. He should have been staying in the fight and just crushing people, but he was a little bit scared of Naru finishing off on casting because he was around half health. Nothing's going to be stopping BRTT at this uh, uh, at this juncture in the game, I don't think. Even Kami, who died early on in that fight, didn't get off his full combo. Yet, Pain Gaming was able to take him clean. They already have three inhibitors down. They're taking the Baron just for good measure. There's going to be double super minion waves spawning in all the lanes. Pain's going to win this one. Well, of course, their final match will be against Lion Gaming, so we'll see how that works out for them. And meanwhile, Immunity versus Gaming Gear would follow this one as well. So, honestly, Pain Gaming have looked so good today. They were the favorites coming in. They were the favorites, and seemingly rightly so. But you also got to look at their records alongside LCS teams. Hasn't fared that well. You could put it down no. to jet lag when they arrive. But I guess when you also look at it, they're probably the most prepared team. The fact that they have their own gaming house, they arrived in Europe on Monday. They've been here an entire week before they even came into this match. The preparation often breeds success for, for everything in life, but specifically with this team, knowing that they're going into an international tournament uh, that actually feeds into another international tournament, obviously, if they're able to qualify, means they have to go all in for this. Having the gaming house and the one week of prep allows them to not only get over the jet lag, but also just have preparation against some of the top teams. And then you always want to practice against someone better than you if you're looking to improve at this point. And they're, I feel like they're humble enough to know that they're the new guys on the block and they need to practice against the LCS teams so they can win in tournaments like this. And it seems to be working wonders. There is the Super Minions stacking in there. It seems only a matter of time before Pain Gaming can flinch just one off again. Fab Fabulous having going at it against Venon down the bottom lane there. But it is all over to Crescendo going to land. Bullet time lands perfectly. Anakin Eclism. It's the best combo they could pull out, but it's not going to be enough because Curse of the Sad Mommy comes out there. BRTT taken very low, but just live stealing it back. Naru might be able to get straight on towards him with the Rift War. Tries it. Doesn't happen. 90 caliber net from BRTT. Gets himself the triple kill. The Nexus is going to be exposed, and this will be... Quadra he wants the Can he get the pentakill? BRTT! Oh! No, there's the pentakill on the fountain! The Counter-Strike Pro proving he can land those headshots. When it counts, it is Pain Gaming victorious. They are 3-0 and top of the league. That's got to feel pretty good right at the end. Not only do they get the 3-0, securing their spot really in tomorrow, most likely going for the number one seed. Pentakill on this kind of stage has got to feel amazing for him. Yeah, you got to be happy with that. Oh! Despite the game was effectively over by then, it still it's still matters. Still a it still counts, even though the team completely gave it to him. Oh, the team definitely wanted to give it to him. That's why they're diving the next step. They didn't take any deaths for it. But he ended up 15-1-5 because of that. Yeah. That's not bad. I mean, we just that went, what, 8-1, 8-1-6 or something like that in the yeah. last game as well. So it'd be 23-2 in the last two His games on KDA. KDA has got to be pretty damn impressive right now. He didn't die, actually, if I remember in the first game either. Wow. I'd have to, I'd have to, we'll have to check, check that, that one. one. Yeah, we'll have to yeah. check that one. Either way, he's definitely doing a fantastic job. BRTT there as the AD carry. He is on your screens and has been playing fantastically well. So Pain Gaming, they've only got Lion ahead of them, and Lion themselves are 0-3. So you've got to wonder, can Pain Gaming go 4-0 in the group stage? I would definitely predict that if I had to call this one because they've been so dominant in their last two games. They had a dominant start in their game against Gaming Gear without the dominant ending. And they do seem to just kind of be ramping up in comfort right now. Sure, it takes them a little bit longer to end the games, but at least they're ending them in style. Ending them in style. So do we see anyone stopping? Do we see, say, Immunity turning it around if they were to get through to the semifinals, finals against each other? How do you see it over a best of three? Because they seem to be the only one so yeah. far that's actually caused a slight problem for pain. I think they still have to, 
they still have to take it day by day here. So much is going to change between one day to the next, knowing that these teams haven't had too much to scout off of. Mm. And Immunity, we're, we're talking to those guys, are very smart about the game. I definitely peg Immunity as their number one threat, and they need to go into tomorrow mainly prepping for them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what a fantastic game. And yeah. already Pain Gaming looking like they are potentially one little toe in towards that final. There's a long way to go yet, though. Yeah. It is time for us to take another short break, though. So go grab a Bratwurst at the food court. <laughs> You're <laughs> my, German. My, my German, well, That's you know, good. sauerkraut, whatever you'd like in there, schnitzel, he could get anything. But don't worry, we'll be right back. <laughs> Shocks and Dark Passages, AD Carry Lithilion will be telling us of his torrid time against BRTT.